Well, welcome back to Contrastly. My name's Simon Plant, and today I'm going to show you how to blend a new sky into a landscape image. Well, today we're going to show you how to uh, replace a sky in an image um, without going to very uh, intricate masking techniques. And uh, this image, I've actually lightened this one in the sky area a little bit for demonstration purposes. But let's say that um, I've got this image and I like it, but I just really wanted a few more clouds in the sky. Well, we're going to replace the sky that's already there with another image of a sky, um, but we're going to do it in a way that doesn't mean we've got to spend hours and hours making a really complex mass. Now, my first tip today, if you do a lot of landscape photography and you know, you're getting a little bit handy in Photoshop and stuff, you may be worth you photographing various different skies. If you come across a nice sky and you think, oh, that looks nice, take some pictures of it uh, at different focal lengths and keep them on one side of your archive because you know they can come in useful later on and I've got a huge amount of images just of skies because I always know that at some point I'm going to need a certain look to an image and I can go into my archives and find something a sky that fits that particular image now in this case the first thing you want to be looking at is the light we don't want to bring a sky in to this image where the lighting is coming from a completely different direction okay so we have to consider that we also have to consider the color balance and that's obviously uh, dealt with a little more, more easily in Photoshop but we still have to consider that so this is the image that actually I'm going to bring in now the lighting on this one doesn't obviously match the backlighting of our background image, but that's okay. It's a bit of a what I would call a, a, a non non lit image. It's very diffused, and there's not really any shadows, obviously, to speak of in the sky area. So it'll work fine. The thing you will notice is obviously the color balance won't work fine, but we'll deal with that as we bring it over. So I'm going to grab my move tool and I'm going to drag and drop this one into our other image and we're just going to move it around we can drop the opacity a little bit if we need to just so we can get an idea where we are on the background image and now we want a bit of overlap often with these images i think this one's going to be okay because the sky here finishes just below the horizon here so i think this one will be fine just as it is so let's bring back up the opacity i'm now going to hold down the alter option key and add a layer mask and by holding the alt key it actually hides that layer from our background yeah so now we can obviously start to reveal some of that sky and we're going to do that with a gradient tool we want to click on the gradients we want foregrounds are transparent which is normally the second one and we want to make sure that the ab gradient is on this fourth one uh, sorry on the first one linear gradient so let's just move that one so it's linear gradient we're going to hold down the, sh the uh, shift key and drag and what I should do You've got to bear in mind you've got to have white in the foreground white reveals black conceals so that was wrong so let's go back and make sure the white's in the foreground hold down the shift key and then just drag down and what that should do is reveal a uh, layer sky layer underneath okay so somewhere around there might be okay it might be a bit too fast i'm going to back up uh, a couple of times there let's just do that again drag down it's not exact size, but somewhere around there, it's pretty good. Now, obviously, that's a good start, but we've obviously got the tree. Uh, he's got this kind of ghosted effect over the top of it, and we don't want that. So the way we can get rid of that is to double-click on the side of the layer here and bring up the layer styles. And what we want to do is go to the underlying layer and drag the blacks slider which is on the left hand side across to bring in some of that tree we then want to click the alter option key and what that does is we'll split that slider and enable us to have a better transition from there we don't want to do it too abruptly so this will enable us to sort of blend and give us a nice transition on there now what you've got to keep an eye on is other parts of the sky because if we go too far we're going to like the top corner here we're going to lose some of the sky we want to try and retain as much as that as possible so bring that back a little bit if that's not working full enough for you it's worth trying the uh, the the layer blend if slider above as well maybe just try bring the highlights down that's not going to work i don't think 
Okay, it's a matter of it's a balancing act, and uh, that around there just helps bring some of these finer details in the tree back through. So I think that's going to work quite nicely. Click OK, and we're already doing quite well. Now you will notice that we have got some of the existing sky. If you've got any detail in this in your background image sky, um, that can sometimes show through, like here. Now that to me is a bit annoying on that one so we need to fix that and that's what we're going to do next now one thing I just realized um, when I was showing you the gradient um, I didn't point out the reason we hold down the shift key when we use gradient is it just constrains it so I'm just going to take you back over that again because I'd like you to be completely clear on what I'm actually telling you and I missed that bit out so I apologize so I'm gonna go back to the hiding of the layer I'm gonna add the hold get the gradient which is again it's set to foreground to background uh, to transparent sorry which is the second one uh, and the actual gradient we want is the first one uh, here okay and uh, we're gonna hold down the shift key and the reason we do that if I don't hold down the shift key I've got white in the foreground to reveal if I don't hold down the shift key we can go off at a funny angles like so and we don't want that so uh, I should have explained that and I, f I forgot to mention it so hold down the shift key and that constrains it nice and straight and we are to drag down around there okay so we're back where we started from just wanted to point that out to you so what we're going to do now is to get rid of this annoying uh, little bit of uh, existing sky in the background now if you watch my videos on contrastly the last one we did which is february 2015 um we did a uh, a short video on retouching a gradient sky because um when you want to take elements out of a, of a sky like this one on the screen now Cloning can be very difficult because you've got uh, lots of uh, tones graduating quite quickly. So a one way round, and I've you know it'd be worth you going to back and watch that video. Um, so what we're going to do now is do the same thing we did in the last video, where we did the painting effect. I'm going to turn this one on and off quickly to see what's coming through, and it's so it's this bit here. So I'm going to add an empty layer above our background layer. I'm going to get a paintbrush tool. I'm going to make sure that it's nice and soft and quite large. Um, maybe not that large. Bring it down a bit. I'm going to Alt or Option click to sample different parts of the existing sky. I'm going to bring my make sure my flow is down quite low, maybe around 10%. I'm just going to slowly build up and cover up the existing uh, this existing bit of sky here. And because we can keep sampling from areas right next to it, we can get quite a nice, we should be able to get quite a nice blend just to cover over. It doesn't have to be perfect with this because we are going to be putting the sky across, but we're going to make it just blend it so it's not so noticeable. Okay. So just keep sampling and brushing over. Now, put that back on. You can see already that's done a perfect job. If I just take that away, you can see that sky underneath. And now we managed to blend it. You can keep this layout active if you need to. I'm just going to come in, just blend this background a little bit more up here. Like so. That's looking pretty good. So there's a very quick way of just solving that little bit of a problem there. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't blend in exact because we've got this sky going over the top. So we're just trying to hide any imperfections there. And that's worked quite well. So that's that taken care of. We're going to now add an adjustment layer on top of this and clip it. And try and just blend the colours in better. Because at the moment the image is doing okay. But it doesn't really match. The blues are just too vibrant to match the background. So my next job, as I said, is to make sure that the exposures uh, and uh, blend uh, sky with the background, and which is, I think they're not going to be too far off on this one, uh, but also, uh, more importantly, get the colours to uh, l match a little bit better. As I said a minute ago, this blue sky just doesn't fit in with this sunset, so uh, we need to warm it up. So we're going to add a new adjustment la layer. Now you can use colour balance or you could use curves. I'm going to use curves because I quite like using curves for adjusting colour. Um, we're going to bring this up. I'm going to 
click on the RGB and click on the red. So now what I'm trying to do here, as I said, take out some of the blue a little bit and add a little bit more warmth uh, and uh, maybe some bit, a bit of red as well. So we're going to raise the red up in this image like so. Now what I should do before that actually, which will, be, will help, is now we've recreated this curves adjustment layer, I'm going to uh, right click on the layer and create clipping mask. What that means is it will only affect our sky underneath, not the whole image, and that's going to help us, you know, obviously um, blend it in better because if it's affecting everything, it's going to affect the background as well, and we don't want it to. So that's clipping it. Let's click back on. So again, go to red, and we can uh, the red uh, red channel, and we're going to raise this to add more red into the sky. You can see that's changing now. I'm going to back it off a little bit. And also the blue. I want to lower the blue channel to add some yellow into the sky, and that's uh, that's looking pretty good. It's just taking some of that uh, that real vibrant blue out of the image, and that's pretty good, like so. So that's something. If um if you find it's still not quite um enough, you could come in and add a uh, photo filter over the top again. You want to make this sure that this is a clipping mask. Oops. And to do that, you just need to right click and go to create clipping mask. And again, that's just going to affect the sky, nothing else. And then you could add a little bit more warmth to the uh, to the sky using a photo filter. And there's uh, several warming ones there. So just toggle through and find the one that you think is going to work the best. Let's just try this first one. And that actually just adds that little bit more. Again, it's mainly the blues I'm concerned with. I'm not too worried about the highlights as much. But that's just helping just sell sell the image that bit more. So it's w always worth using that just to help a little bit if you need to. Now I've noticed another small issue down here with the, with the uh, background with the sky. It it tailors off and goes quite dark. We don't want that, so I'm going to add another layer above the background layer. Um, let me just rename this one. Uh, paint out cloud. That's the one where we painted out the uh, cloud that's in the uh, in the background there up here. And this one we're going to call uh, paint lower. Sky, you know, you don't have to name your layers, but I do find if you start working through a real big image, it, you later on, uh, after an hour or so, you'll uh, wish you had. It just makes it a little bit easier. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to get a paintbrush, and I'm going to just sample from around here. Um, let's turn some of these off. So what I want to do is just blend this out. So I'm just going to paint over again the opacity down to about 10%. I'm just going to gently just paint over these darker areas. So I just think it stuck out, uh, stood out like a sore thumb before. Uh, there's before, there's after. So it just lightens that area up again. Now if you find you've overdone it a little bit and maybe overspilled like I have here very slightly on the hills, you just come down here, add a layer mask, uh, get a paintbrush tool, we blacken the foreground, make sure the, the mask is highlighted and you can just paint that off any offending areas like so. There's my mask. So very versatile. So that's all blended in quite nicely. The last thing we'd have to do, and I don't think it's an issue with this one, is you might need to make sure that the sky actually kind of blends in exposure-wise to the rest of the image. So no point bringing in a real dark, moody sky when the sort of uh, your background is quite light and sort of backlit. So you need to make sure that the exposures uh, work. So I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer on the top here. Make sure that that's clipped, and let me just show you how to do that again. Right click on the side of the layer and create clipping mask, and again, that's going to um, just affect the sky area. Um, I've actually added by mistake a levels. You can use levels uh, if you want to, but I prefer to use curves. So, kind of the curves, and again, clip it. And now we're just affecting the sky, so just have a little look and see if it needs to be darkened. It certainly doesn't on this one, or lightened a little bit. And I don't think it really needs much. I'm just going to lighten it a little tiny bit. Just be careful, as I said, not to make sure that you're not clipping the image too much. But I actually think that's not looking too shabby at all. So let me just um, let me just lock these together. 
in fact it's always worth just highlighting the whole lot and just make sure they're locked in case you knock anything and it uh, moves and then we're going to uh, click on command and control G to create a group and we'll call this one uh, retouch and then here's before not a bad looking image and here's after just changes the the look the skies are so important for the look of an image they can really uh, really uh, make or break a landscape um, I do think skies are probably one of the most important elements uh, of a landscape picture so it is quite important that the uh, the sky looks good um, still a little bit more work we could do in here but I don't think really anybody's going to go in there and, and, and look at that and necessarily think that it's been composited in I think actually it's working quite well and the best thing about this particular image uh, or this technique uh, is once you've kind of done it a couple of times it's very quick to do as I said there's no complex max ma uh, masking as you've seen and in the real world uh, this if I wasn't videoing this and doing a tutorial I reckon that I could probably get this image done and dusted in five ten minutes literally that quick but that does come with experience uh, etc might take a little bit longer but much quicker than trying to mask out uh, branches of the tree so that's the end of the video i hope you've enjoyed it and i hope to catch you on the next one cheers for watching